shit. Another iCarly vid. Jeez, how many of these are you going to do, Jordan? Well, it's not like you're gonna do another one Friday, right? You're not going to do another one on Friday, right? Well, I promise this channel does more than iCarly. It's just as I planned out what I want to cover throughout July, it just kind of equaled out to having this week be iCarly week. But today's video is actually the first of two follow-up videos. A few weeks ago, we covered the darker episode of iCarly titled I Psycho. It involved an awkward fan named Nora who ends up kidnapping Carly, Sam, and Freddy. Go check out that video to be fully caught up. Here today, we are covering an episode that happens a bit later in the series where once again, Nora returns. But is she still a psycho as the show suggests. Well, probably. The episode's titled I Still Psycho, so I assume that's a yes. I have a lot planned for the channel. A bunch of cartoon content, live action content, and a bunch more that you'll see very soon, so I thank you for the support on everything that I've been making recently. I cannot express my gratitude enough for it all. You all truly make this feel like we have a fun community to discuss these shows and movies, and I look forward to every time a new video goes up and a new discussion can begin. Make sure to hit the like button as it does help out this video a lot, and I'd be very very appreciative if you did. Okay, let's jump into the video. Our episode begins at the end of an iCarly web show, doing the cowboy bit in which we also see in the previous Psycho episode at Nora's house. The crew gets an email saying that Nora is up for a parole hearing to discuss if the iCarly peeps think Nora is well enough to be let out of prison and integrated back into society. When they are discussing it alone, Sam and Freddy discuss the possibility of voting in favor of Nora getting out while Carly is still shaken up about the experience and doesn't think that she should have a second chance, even though she felt bad for Nora at the end of the original episode. Gibby comes over along with a carbon copy of his head in a bag. This will be a running gag all the way through part three of the series in Sam and Cat, as well as in various other showings in iCarly. And he even votes in favor of Nora being released as well. At the court hearing, we see a very remorseful Nora pleading her sorrow towards what she had done previously. And as Carly begins to let her emotions out, she starts to feel guilt seeing Nora and Nora's parents cry and just gives up exclaiming to let her go. After the whole crew forgives her and the judge releases Nora back into the world, she is very appreciative and invites them to a special dinner party in which they are all very smartly refusing to go to until none of Nora's classmates and even her own dad will not be attending. Which, yep, you guessed it, the Hikarli crew get swept up in guilt and agree to going to the dinner party. You think no matter how much Nora has changed that they wouldn't be foolish enough to set one foot back at her house? But I digress. Maurice the chicken is there at least. Nora's mom shows off the special Norwegian food prepared for the night, and later in that night, Spencer comes over to pick them up, but when he gets there, he has to use the restroom where Nora's mom shows him to the basement. Oh, I wonder where this is going. As Carly, Sam, and Freddy try walking out the door to say goodbye, Nora says it's not goodbye. And here begins the creepiness of the dual episode special. The mom locks the basement door and tells the crew that they are going to be here for a while. The front door and windows are all sealed shut. The windows were replaced with the maxi glass used to trap them in the basement last time. Spencer is shown to be locked up to a spinning wheel and is threatened by severe amounts of spinning if the iCarly crew tries anything to harm Nora or her family. And that's really the first part of the episode. It concludes right there here on a darker note of the crew having no way out and Spencer being tortured in the basement by, by a spinning wheel. We find out in the next part of this two-part episode that her goal is to undo the taint of her 16th birthday party in which Nora blames them for ruining, as well as the parents are just as crazy as Nora is. The mom brings out more birthday party guests who are just dressed up mannequins, and we hear that this party will go on forever and ever and ever and what? You know the evil things that every villain says at some point. Nor then collects their phones and uses Freddy's phone to text Freddy's mom that he's okay and he's with Spencer at a hotel for the night and to not worry. Then with the phone, we see the classic, Will it blend? And it in fact does blend. Don't breathe this. In an attempt to escape, and thanks to Gibby's head recreation, they make it look as if he is sleeping on the couch as Gibby begins to climb up and out of the chimney while Nora and her mother are in the other room preparing the cake. Shortly after, Nora and her mother come back out singing how jolly great of a person Nora is and forcefully kisses Freddy, this time with no maxi glass in front of her and yeah, that's that's not cool at all. Gibby finally makes his way up to the top of the chimney, but ends up getting wedged, and only his head and shoulders are peeking out into the fresh air of the outdoors. Nora simultaneously gets crazier and crazier and finds out that Gibby isn't actually there and tortures Spencer some more for this. Cut to the next morning where the crew wakes up, still trapped at Nora's place. Gibby is still stuck, and Nora is still threatening the crew. Nora's dad comes home from his random camping escapades, which were more important than his own daughter's birthday party slash kidnapping attempt. But as it turns 
turns out, yep, he's just as crazy as the rest of the family as we thought. And as a family, they then threaten the crew with the forever and ever and ever thing again. In a quick thinking of how to get out, Freddy remembers that he has a chip implanted in him by his mother's overprotection. So Sam and Carly trigger its safety response by shocking Freddy with the shock pen, making its return from the I Get Pranky episode. Freddy's mom, with the help of Tebow, starts heading towards Nora as she worries Nora has harmed him once again, busting through Nora's front door on Tebow's motorcycle, and an all-out fight begins at the house with Sam flipping Nora into a table, Carly going into the basement to rescue Spencer from the spinning wheel of torture, Tebow and Nora's dad get into a brawl, and Freddy's mom bringing back the fence and Bensons and sword fights both Nora and Nora's mom at the same time, and, and Sam makes a burger. Say what you want about Freddy's mom being overbearing, but she's pretty awesome here and she whips their butts. Sam then shocks them all with the same shock pen they used on Freddy, and then the iCarly crew tells Nora that her and her parents are going to prison forever and ever and ever, and I'm not doing this again. We get it. They all watch the film masterpiece that is The Shining. Anyway, they all make it home safely. Nora and her parents are going to prison, and we find out that Gibby is, well, he's still stuck in the chimney. Now, for the sake of just discussing the darker parts of the episode, the B plot of this being Tebow revealing his true self to Mrs. Benson after faking who he is in order to rent a room from her, and after just being kicked out, he regains his room for rent there by helping her save her son. It was a nice B plot that was true to the characters on how she would react to him not being the suit-wearing, well-mannered gentleman, but how she grows to accept it over the thing that she loves the most, her son, even if she won't hug Tebow. Don't touch us! All right, geez, Mrs. Benson. Nora's father is actually played by Andrew Friedman, Uncle Jack in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, so at least for the creep factor, that was good casting there. He just needs to keep his tiny hands to himself. Big! Masculine, my hands tell a story. Like stated in the previous video, this is all played for comedy, but when you really look at it all, it's pretty dark once again. And I'm not sure which is darker, the original episode based on them being trapped in a basement, or this, where the characters make similar mistakes, like going over to the house again, which is played like a horror film sequel in which characters for the sake of a sequel make same mistakes with certain aspects being a little, or a lot, more ramped up. With the whole house being the trap this time and Spencer being tortured on a spinning wheel, as well as upgrading the final fight from a WWE SmackDown match between two people to a whole family brawl between the Dershlitz and the crew with hand-to-hand -hand combat, sword fighting, and electrocution. Okay, saying it like that does make it sound a lot more epic and dramatic than it is. This was a kid's episode of television, mind you. But seeing Tebow and Miss Benson burst through the door on a motorcycle only to get into a battle with a shovel and a two-on-one sword fight was pretty cool. And Nora's house can really never catch a break when it comes to getting utterly destroyed inside. I guess they really don't need to worry about that in prison, right? What's happening? So that was part two of the Nora trilogy. Part three we will cover here on the channel soon, but I would love to know your thoughts on this part. Do you think this is darker than the original I Psycho? Are you a fan of the Psycho episodes in general? Let me know. The third part of the Psycho series takes place during the Sam and Cat spin-off show, so look forward to myself discussing that here soon, like I said. Later this week on the channel, I will have another iCarly video like I mentioned at the start, but it is on the latest two episodes of the new show. So expect my thoughts and breakdowns of episode episode 4 and 5 this Friday of the iCarly revival, and the next two episodes after that every other Friday. Just so I can give you more substance per video and not have to feel like all you're getting is iCarly videos all the time, cartoon shows are still being talked about here on the channel, please no need to worry. Like I said, I have a lot planned for July. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like as it truly helps out the video, and I very much appreciate it. Subscribe to be a part of my journey through movies and television and how these films and shows affected my life from the past and present. As always, have a good one, and until next next time. Later.